How you guys doing? So on this week's episode of The Playbook, me and Joe talk about the Jets. It wasn't even the plans to talk about the Jets, but it kind of just happened. It was that kind of week. We talk about rain and how it affects football games, a little bit of how it really affected the uh, Giants and the Cardinals game. Then we're going to go in our picks. Uh, we, at the end, talk about the trades, trade deadline coming up very soon from this episode. And then at the end, we talk about Justin Herbert, um, Pac-12 player of the week. I love it. My fantasy season is over. Um, Antonio Brown, why? Patrick Mahomes gets hurt. Saquon got hurt. Like, come on, top three picks. Like, you can't blame me. I'm one and six. I've never been this bad in fantasy. But it's just one of those things. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy the show. And, um, yeah. Hey. It's me. Ha. Ha. I'd start shouting people out right now, but that's a slippery slope. What's good, football fans? I'm Rob Planner. I'm with Joe Hackett. This is the playbook. Joe, it's, it was a rough one, bro. It was a nothing, rough one. Nothing's great. It, Everything it, sucks. The food I'm eating tastes awful, and my headaches have returned. Yeah, I actually was feeling kind of under the weather. I, I kind of got over it. I guess it's more than I was, but I was. It was bad. This just was nothing good about this. There was a lot of rain this week. We were talking about that in a little bit. And the Jets just got it. It wasn't good. We had a homecoming this past weekend. Me and Joe were talking up the Jets, you know, as we should after last week's performance. And then this past week, just not what we expected. Not what anyone expected. I want to take this time to formally apologize to Brandon Morales, BMO. Um, The Patriots are a great team. And we did not bring it. We could still finish 10 and 6, I believe that. But my heart hurts. My head hurts. And I just I just want I just want Sunday to come so we could beat Jacksonville. And yeah, that's honestly how most of the Jets organizations feel. And um just listening to like the the, the radio today, seeing how Gates was talking even in his um his interviews, seeing everybody's kind of handling it. Um, and before yeah, just, we get into anything, I'm not going to touch on the comment Sam made that should not have made the air. So we're going to clear that. I'm not even going to say it because nobody should be talking about it. That's a conversation that happened between him, a coach. He admitted a mistake, and it should have never made it on national television. Yeah, so like that That just, I mean, it just adds fuel to fire, honestly. Like it's just. That's because not, it, it becomes it, another one of those games, like oh the butt fumble game, oh the I'm seeing ghost game. There I said it, okay, and th- that's what it's going to be remember remembered as, and it's going to ha- haunt him his entire career uh, when he has a bad game. The media is going to go off, but it is what it is. He's going to be a good quarterback, and he's going to be around for 20 years. Another New York team did also have a bad week, but not as bad as us. Yeah, and th- the thing was, like Gates was saying, it just kind of snowballed. Like, when you just can't get anything mm-hmm. going, like, it's just everything went wrong. That was the kind of situation. It was almost like, you know, uh, reminiscent of the Eagles game where you just had a defense who was, mm-hmm. r- like, relentless. They just kept showing as, as many fronts as possible. I think almost the Patriots probably looked at the Eagles game and was like, you know what, Sam's good, but if we bring seven, this O-line just can't figure it out. They're too young up front. You know, there was injuries mm-hmm. uh, on the O-line. So, I mean, we, you know, um, Idoga had to go, literally had to, you know, play left tackle this week. Yeah. It, there's, it just wasn't. When you have young guys up front and they're not used to playing with each other, this is literally the first time that any of them almost have played with each other. It's mm-hmm. not going to be good. You just can't deal with a, a Belichick front seven that's going to bring everything. The thing that's cool about Bill Belichick is when he analyzes an offense, the thing he's going to do, and he does it consistently week by week, he takes out your best player. And in that case, it was Sam Darnold. And how did the Jets look without Sam Darnold two weeks ago? Crap, right? We couldn't get a first down. Well, he eliminated Sam Darnold. And he said, I know these receivers are terrible. Well, they're not terrible, but they can't get open. Um, Just run straight man, sending seven, eight guys at a time. Of course, Sam was rattled and couldn't find anybody open. An offensive line was confused with the with the with the blitz schemes. One time, our rookie uh, Unga is that his name? 
Idoga. Idoga. He uh, he actually went to block a a linebacker that dropped back in the coverage and left the guy free for Sam. I think it was Kyle Van Noy came free, and that was actually the 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 play where Sam fumbled. He has to have two hands on the ball, but he was already out of rhythm by then. Yeah, it wasn't like like you said about running man. I think there was maybe one route where Stephen Gilmore actually locked up Robbie Anderson. And the other ones, I mean, there were there were man routes, and mm-hmm. I mean, there was one on fourth down. We were uh, either in the red zone or just outside of the red zone, and Sam couldn't finish his throwing motion, and yeah. the ball sailed over Robbie's head, and that was literally because six guys came. We had a little bit of protection, but he just didn't have enough time. And a lot of his interceptions yeah. last night, you saw he threw off his back foot, and the mm-hmm. reason he's on his back foot in the first place is because there's so much pressure on his face, he can't stand in the pocket and deliver, like what you saw against the Cowboys last week mm-hmm. where he was able to step up, he had time, there was only four guys, you know, uh, that, were, that were rushing, and he could really make throws. Sam Darnold's a great quarterback if he can set his feet when he's throwing the way he did. I mean, he threw one mm-hmm. touchdown last week, but it only meant he only brought three guys, and he threw it to a tight end wide open in the middle of the field off his back foot. But this week, I mean, those interceptions he threw off his back foot, right into, you know, in man coverage, right to a, um, right to Stephen Gilmore, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. And there was the one he threw to McCourty, also off his back foot. And this all comes from just, you know, you bring six and seven guys, you only got five old linemen, and there's nobody helping them. You know, mm-hmm. Lev's either emotion and Lev out or Lev's, you know, sliding to the wrong side. It's just not, it's just not good. It just wasn't good. And the thing is, there were so many issues offensively. Um, we'll get into defensively if you want, but offensively there were so many issues. Coaching, I think, was awful. Uh, in the second half, if they keep sending seven, eight guys at a time, you want to run quicker routes. And it just seemed like we were running deep routes, still trying to beat them deep. Well, I know when you're playing, when you're down, you have, you have to come back as fast as possible. But sometimes you just have to say, hey, I'm going to take five yards because when you run man, there's no one over top especially if you're blitzing eight people, a slant could go 15 yards ago for a touchdown. Uh, and there were just no coaching adjustments. The O-line continued to be confused and oh, everything hurts. Everything. Yeah, it was. And it just, just like you were saying, there's, you can try to run the shorter routes, but it was so, it was so bad. There was no time even. For, I mean, there was one time a five yard out was wide open and that was yeah. the fumble, the fumble play. Yeah. And he literally couldn't get there because someone was in his face right away. Yeah. Like it, it's, and he couldn't just, step up either or else he'd step up into them. So it's into it's guys just, that are getting blown off the ball. It's, yeah. it's bad. And even Gase even said, it. he said, you know, like, and it's not the game script leads itself to him having to play a certain way. Like you said, mm-hmm. where you have to try to get back on the board. Like Gase was playing to win the game. He was, he was, he wasn't going to sit there and, you know, just start hand and leg the ball, just dumping everything mm-hmm. off, like very short running screens. Like he wanted to, you know, he wanted to try to get the ball downfield, try to make it a competitive game. It's not like we're a team that's that bad that we can't compete with the Patriots. But it's just, you know, when, when things start going bad and the game script gets a certain way, people are going to say what they're going to say about, you know, how bad the Jets are, what the score looked like. But you got to remember, when you get in a certain situation, Gase, yeah, he probably could have put up 14 points, you know, yeah. had he started playing more conservative. But he's trying to get in a position where we can, you know, win, and we just couldn't get anything started, you know. Mm-hmm. So I do like you know, the I way just, he handled Sam, though. When he came over, he calmed him down, said, hey, we could score here. We still have a chance to win this game. We get ball at half. I, I, I think when it comes to moral support, Gase gets an A+, plus, but that doesn't win football games. And he's very even keel, you know, even with the win last week, he wasn't going crazy, wasn't losing his mind. And this week, same thing. So I like, you know, a coach that will do that, that doesn't get too, you know, heated and says crazy stuff because, you know, we see what happened with the Eagles this week. Mm -hmm. Peterson guarantees a win and they lose by 27. So, you know, it's just you got to keep those things in mind as a head coach. And I mean, defensively, not even to, you know, just touch. The defense wasn't bad. Defensively, we really weren't bad. Um, I I can't I, I can't agree with you there. From from no, the we, beginning we, of the game, I kind of knew we were going to lose. What, what was it? A nine, a seven to nine minute drive. I don't know the exact number, but you can't give up a seven nine minute drive and have it end in a touchdown. C.J. Mosley was playing hurt. Tremaine Johnson's lazy. He needs to be. I want to. I want to send a message. Just cut him. But he's he got he has to get benched there before that play. I actually pointed out. I was watching with David Cuesta, fellow sports opinions uh, podcaster. And I said, does True even want to be on the field right now? And let alone, yeah, he he was in position to make the play, but he was just so lazy. And that that, that play was embarrassing. C.J. Mosley, it looked like he was playing hurt. He was limping on the James White touchdown run. Or was it Sonny Michelle? I don't know. Um, 
just really bad. Really, really bad. So, Joe, I'm going to give you a couple reasons why you're wrong. And the first reason is because, yes, Tremaine Johnson's bad. Yes. And, yes, the Patriots had whatever was a nine-minute drive to start the half and it ended in – or, you know, to start the game and it ended in a touchdown. And it's unacceptable but for that to happen. they literally started inside the red zone or on their side of the field half the game. And they, get, and they, they held the Patriots to a field goal the first time it happened, and yep. they gave them a touchdown after – they gave them a touchdown after – a penalty that happened in the end zone. So it wasn't – the defense really didn't play bad. And, again – How many times did we pressure this. Brady? Joe, the point is you, you can't you're, – you're, you're comparing – okay, you're trying to compare what happened to us. How many times did we run zone? Too many you're times. Trying, you're trying to compare us to a Patriots defense. That's not the defense we no, are. No, I'm not. I'm C. trying C. to compare us to the New York Giants who sacked them and fumbled. They made them fumble. We took a touchdown. C.J. Mosley was, was hurt. Was playing hurt. C.J. Mosley was hurt. And we literally – Leonard Williams didn't have an awful game. It, uh, the de- defensively, it was not an awful game. You can sit here and say pressure Brady. All. The thing is, we can, can't bring six guys. They'll pick people up, Joe, and then they will destroy our secondary. We, you, we don't have the personnel to play what they do. We don't have Stephen Gilmore. We don't have McCourty. The Why McCourty were the Giants play. competitive in the first half? Joe, because it's, it's a different situation. They're, honestly, their secondary is still better than ours. Our secondary is god-awful. There's, you can't play man and bring guys and have pressure on Brady. My dad was saying the same thing. Like, can't sit in zone. Can't sit. What else are we going to do? Literally, what else are we going to do against a team, against Tom Brady, an offense that's been in – there's linemen who played together, guys who've seen it, and it, it's not going to be bring seven guys and you have one guy coming free. It just doesn't work like that when you have guys who played with each other for years. So it's not the defense did not play bad. Our head coach said our defense didn't play bad. He knows what the issue is. He said we were bad in all three phases. He said we're all bad in all three phases, but he said that the defense did. uh, I forget his exact phrasing, but he said that the defense stepped up at a time. There was times. There was times when if if we could have scored this game, would have been competitive. That's what I'm gonna say. You know, third down, this defense defense is literally awful. Joe, you literally are saying things that it doesn't. The defense was competitive. If we could score, this game would have been competitive. That's what I'll leave it at. If we could get going on offense, the game would have been competitive. Gacy said similar things in his press conference. He said we were bad on all three phases. It's not not similar things. He said we were bad on all three phases, but he literally, Joe, you can watch the press conferences. I did. I did watch that. I stayed up till 1 o'clock. And what did he say about the defense? He said he did not say we were bad in all three phases. And And he he also said that the defense stepped up at times. He said said we couldn't do anything right. Yeah, if the defense so, steps so, up when you're down so 30, you're it doesn't wrong, matter. So you're, so you're wrong on that. It wasn't when no, we were down we're 30. Wrong. They held them to a field goal in the second possession. They held yeah, them to a field goal time. in the red zone in the second possession. It's one time. No, I, wish, I just wish you were right on this. I really do. No, you're just no, very wrong. You're, you're, you're just very you're, wrong. You're, no, just very, no, you're, Joe, wrong. you're just very wrong. You're actually wrong. So we're going to move on to the Giants and the Cardinals game. Um, Edmonds went crazy. Three touchdowns. Um and the Giants lost. It was a it was a closer game than it, well, it, it, you know, it ended close. But it just it was it wasn't a bad game. But you know what happens when when it rains in a football game? A lot of things are infected, and that you could see it. Uh, a lot of drop passes from the Giants side of the ball. Um, a lot of drop passes on the Cardinals side. It was just hard to you know when it rains, it's hard to throw the ball in a football game. But the biggest thing is I think what with rain too, you want to be careful with guys who are injured and. Um, David Johnson has been having back issues, so he got in and played a little bit, but I think it was more Edmonds just being very he, – he, it was his day. It was just Edmonds' day, and I don't think they wanted to, you know, make make Johnson, you know, aggravate any of his, his back injury. And, you know, if he slips or something happens, it could just be bad. I mean, we saw Saquon almost – it looked kind of scary for a second. He almost went out, um, but it was just a pain tolerance thing with his ankle. He was fine, uh, had one touchdown. And, you know, it's just it's just hard to get going. It really is. I mean, you see the players taking mm-hmm. their gloves off. You see guys dropping, I mean, passes five yards down the field. You just can't catch it. The ball slips out. And, I mean, the Cardinals, the way they adjusted to that is uh, they just run a very – it was a very, like, spread, collegiate-looking offense. They were uh, – Edmonds was running. He came out of the slot, and he would uh, motion. They kind of run, like, a split-back thing, kind of running a read-optional Kyler Murray. And when you have an op- offense that, you know, with Kingsbury and – with Murray back there and a running back who's, you know, running like an all pro, it's going to be hard to stop them. And the Giants defense just had their hands full. You know, they really, they, they, they schemed better for the conditions they had to play. And I think if this game wasn't raining, I think the Giants probably would have been able to, probably would have been able to come out on top just because um, Mm -hmm. Jones would have had a little more time, you know, more completions, but with the game script and the way the game had to be played because of conditions, um, 
Arizona was just a better team. Arizona was just a better team. Especially if you – when you spotted – the Giants went into the second half uh, or second quarter down 14 nothing. So when you down when you spot a team 14 points, especially when it's raining, people don't realize what the rain actually affects here, Robbie. So, of course, you get your slips, your slips and your slides and your drop balls. You Sometimes they take off the gloves because – you know, the, it actually makes it more slippery if you have if it's raining too much. But football is so much timing. You know, uh, a, a lot of QB reads at times. It's I see this, and I know this guy's going to be there at this point. So sometimes don't even look, and you just you just react and you throw. The route tree's messed up. Uh, the plays you run is different. You got you run the ball more. You saw that in the Niners game. And they won nine nothing, covered the spread. <laughs> um, yeah. I, it, it's just so many things. Then that's when you get into coaching because there's people like Bill Belichick who get professionals to figure out the flight dynamics of the ball an hour before kickoff. I think the Giants put themselves in a bad hole, and given the weather, it's impossible to get out of that. Yeah, and honestly, if it wasn't for the pump block that ended up being a touchdown, that game probably would have been a little more out of hand. That kind of brought things back mm-hmm. together and kind of made it more – that made it competitive, honestly. You know, yeah. you have a really good chance to – I think there's a stat, something about, like, you have an 80% chance to win a game <laughs> if you block a punt or something like that. I feel like, like every so. coach says that. Like, it's, has it hasn't been proven. Ever, like, yeah. I, no yeah, one's yeah, ever but... actually looked it up, but you could just pull a number and just say, you know what, 80% of the times when you're not supposed to score and you score, you win the game. So, yeah, for like, but no, I, 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 I would agree with you. I, I just think it's funny how coaches. They, <laughs> yeah, it is kind of a stat that they just kind of 69, 73%, 86. I think it's just something to get the special teams guys yeah, like yeah. fired up pretty much. Yeah, like, definitely. But I mean, it, it, it helps, you know, it, it keeps games that that makes a huge difference, you know, because the Giants offense wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it's hard, it's hard to get going. It's hard to get going. You don't have a mobile quarterback, you know, mm-hmm. your running backs kind of playing on like one and a half ankles here. So, you, it, it was, and, and then you don't rookie. have the most and weapons. It's a, yeah, and it's a rookie. He made a rookie mistake. The the interception. It's gonna happen. He still fumbles, but it's fine. He's gonna lower it. He's gonna lower his fumble. He's gonna lower his turnover numbers as the season goes on and into next season. This is a multi year process. Yep, yep. So, um, the only other little aspect about the rain is just the um, the Ravens Seahawks game. It affected in a major way too. I mean, oh, and yeah. really it was honestly the Ravens offense and. The, the thing is, when a game lends itself to Lamar not really having to throw the ball that much mm-hmm. and not having to throw it too far, he's going to have a good game, you know. And this was kind of where, you know, they he made good – he did make good throws even in the rain. I mean, regardless, it was just drops, yeah. you know. But it – um when you have a guy who's that athletic and, you know, I mean, when they go for – the really the play that, that changed the game was the fourth down. Um, oh, great really play. Like great, and, great play call. Fourth and three from, like, the – like, 15 or something, mm-hmm. and they just – they punch it in, like – and this guy, you know, they Baltimore runs this. They run this formation where they, you know, everybody's on the line of scrimmage. You got a, an H back, <laughs> and you literally just it's either power right or sweep with Lamar, and it works. And this guy, he's just so athletic. He finds the end zone, and you know, he it's it's kind of crazy watching him play because it's not. It's almost like you people say, "Oh, we fear if there's like a leg injury or something, he won't be the same." Which, yeah, but the way this guy moves, it's almost like, how is he going to get injured? Yeah. Like, there's so many times he just stops on a dime, repet like three times in a row, will stop on a dime, and will just end up untouched. Like, it's so mm-hmm. hard for someone to even come close to doing anything. That I just don't see. I mean, it's possible. You know, it's the NFL. He makes a cut and he doesn't see somebody and just gets leveled. It's possible, well, but it's not even that. You like you said, he stops on a dime, but an ACL could it's a non could be a non non contact yeah. injury so yep. it's just i think it's acceptable for a couple seasons but i don't think it's sustainable long term yeah and it's going to have to be one of those things where his arm just uh, like you know gets better i mean yeah Vic, it'll have to get better yeah you know Vic just I'm tired of people just assuming what these quarterbacks are two years and or not even two years into their career it's been a year and eight games a year and seven games it, this is a like I said, we're expecting guys. You even Aaron Rodgers sat a year behind Brett Favre. We're, we're taking twenty-one year olds and we're saying here, win win us a Super Bowl. No, it's not going to happen. It's a multi-year process. Everyone needs to calm down and stop making assumptions about these quarterbacks. 
Yeah, it's just it's hard. I you know the reason they do that is because you know <clears throat> they, these guys play in college. They're you know top five in Heisman, you know voting, mm-hmm. and everybody expects them to just come in and be what they were in college. People don't realize that like they might play with three guys on those <laughs> championship rosters, might make it to the NFL. Like yep. this is not you're not just going to come in and just be, you know, the guy right off the bat, you know, like, you know, and we see that with Baker now, he's kind of, you know, he fizzled out of that sophomore slumps, the real thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's hard for guys to just come in and just, I can't think of a guy who just did it right, like right away. Who's the last guy that, you know, I'm probably, but there's you know, not too many guys that can do it. I mean, Mahomes, oh, yeah, the, cl- the closest is like Andrew Luck, Cam Newton, like those guys, but even they struggled. Yeah, Cam is yeah, Cam's up and down. I mean, he had the really the one really good year, but you know, it, the it, the injuries thing kind of plagued them too. It's just it's a quarterback, so it's it's a hard position in the NFL. There's gonna be ups and downs, which is why you know when you see guys do it well for a long time, they even they you know it, it took them a while. It took them a little while. So yeah. well, Rivers came in right away, right? Uh yeah, I'm pretty sure him and Eli, Ben did right. Ben was behind Maddox. He was, oh, but yeah, it was yeah. only for like. I think it was for a game. I think he started the second mm-hmm. game and was it lost. They lost the first one. He won like 15 straight or 14 straight, something like that. But yeah, most guys, you got to at least, you got to sit behind somebody and, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's just hard. You don't come in day one and just dominate this league and you're going to have bad years. So mm-hmm. it's just how it goes. But um, all right, Joe, let's move to the picks. Let's move to the picks for this week. All right. Let me find my little thing here. So we're going to start off Thursday night as always. Redskins, Minnesota. I don't think anyone's questioning this. Minnesota by a landslide, right? Yeah, the Vikings have been playing really well now. Um, really starting to come into their own, getting Diggs back involved, Thielen and Kirk Cousins. They're just playing. Dalvin Cook's still good. You know, if and, they stay healthy, they're going to be a really tough team. So. Yeah, Thielen might not even play. I think they're in the uh, they're in the best division in football right now. I would argue. Yeah, it's either I, I, them. I, yep. It's either them or even Arizona could be their division. The uh, NFC West could yeah, be. Yeah, that's another. Too. That's tough now. That's tough now too. They they put together three straight. So, but yeah, mm-hmm. like the Vikings. But uh, yeah, I'm going. Minnesota. What's wrong? With, what's Thielen's deal? What's... Uh, it's a hamstring. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. They say too. he might play. He'll be there in two weeks. But Thielen, no Thielen, Minnesota by twenty. Yeah, it'll just get Dave more involved. So now we're moving to the one o'clock games. Arizona at New Orleans. I think Arizona's playing really well. No one expected this. I sure as hell didn't. But Teddy Bridgewater is playing well. So I'm going New Orleans. Yeah, I'm going New Orleans too. Teddy's 5-0, and oh, so that's all needs to be said. No Alvin won't matter. No Alvin this week either. No so. Alvin, no problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cincinnati at Rams, another one o'clock game. Rams. Yeah, the, the Bengals are awful. I actually didn't realize that they hadn't won a game yet. I had no idea they were 0-6 until I uh, I saw mm-hmm. something on Instagram. I like I I don't know why, just because the fan when you like paying attention to fantasy and you're seeing mm-hmm. like oh Ross and this and that, I just had, I had no idea. It sounds so crazy, but I, I thought they at least won a game. But. Yeah, I mean right. it's just a bad team, but it is what it is. I do like the under though, 48 and a half. Yep. Yep. Next game, Denver at Indy. Denver just traded Emmanuel Sanders to the 49ers. Um, I like Cortland Sutton, but I, I don't think they could compete with Indy, who might be – who's probably a top three team in football right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, arguably top three. But, yeah. they're, I mean, really good team. Really good team. I, I'm, I'll take Indy. I got to take Indy there, too. Mm-hmm. Broncos. You know, just, and I like I them. They're only they're minus six right now. Yeah, that's a that's a yeah, that's a good line. So I think that's, that's a good bet. Line to take. Next game, Chargers at Bears. This one, I'm if I want to th- say that Mitch Trubisky is going to come out and he's going to throw the football, but they have some serious QB issues, and it's not like say you know Daniel Jones he fumbled what three times and then threw a pick. Sam Donald had four interceptions. It's not like. Oh, it's just the game. This is a consistent thing, and he's having the time to throw, and he's inaccurate. I don't know who to go with here. Who are you going with? I'm going with um, I'm going to go with Chicago just because the Chargers have uh, one of my real good friends from Pace. He's a Chargers fan. He'll always mm-hmm. like call me on Sundays and like talk about the Chargers, and uh, it, I just they, I can't trust them. I've betted on them too many right. times. They disappointed me too many times, and the Bears. 
yeah, Mitch is Mitch, but if they can, you know, if they can get something going on the ground game, this past week was awful, obviously, mm-hmm. but I think that their defense will still be able to just pull it out for them. That's just something they're going to they're gonna struggle offensively. The Chargers will struggle offensively if the mm-hmm. Bears can be the Bears' defense. So I'm going, uh, I'm going to Chicago. The only thing I'm worried about is this is two weeks in a row that the Bears have let up 30-plus points. Really, yeah, I mean. Which is, it, it scares me. It's scary, know? Um, yeah. With Keenan Allen and Phillip Rivers. But I got to think Mitch is going to have one good game. And I think it's going to be against this very weak Chargers defense. So I am going Bears. All right. And they're minus four. I like the under. The over is 40. I like the under. Giants at Detroit. Detroit has played two football, two good football teams back-to-back division. The over is 50. I like it, but I'm going Detroit. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm probably gonna, I'm probably going to Detroit. Who? <sighs> they play the Giants. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm on Detroit. I was doing some. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, nah, we're <laughs> yeah, Detroit, dog. I'm trying to. I was getting Herbert stats. I knew he was like player. We just wanted to make sure I had it right. But yeah, yeah, yeah we're going, we're going with the Lions, dog. Marvin Jones had like. A trillion fantasy points this and week, and he can they, sing. They, they know, and he can they sing know, really good. <laughs> they know what they're doing over there, dog. And the Giants are just—it's it, not Saquon's back. I don't think it'll matter. This line seems pretty good. Slay, the Slay's upset though. They traded. Um, uh why does I was just looking at this when I was mad in Chipotle, but yeah, they traded one of the corners, and Slay's very upset. So I think that. <laughs> next game: New York Jets at Jacksonville Jaguars. It is a one o'clock game. Jags are favored minus six. The over is 41 and a half. I do like the over, and I think the Jets get back on track this week. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm taking the Jets. I'm taking the Jets, too. I think the Jags are st- – the Ramsey situation kind of helps us out a lot because mm-hmm. they don't have that guy who absolutely can just shut down Robbie, and I think, you know, that post route will be open against, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess they'll put AJ out there. but No, AJ's um, good, but – you know, Demarius Thomas, Jamison Crowder, I don't think you could stop all of them. And like Coach Gay said in this press conference, he said, once it's on tape and you got destroyed doing this, you're going to see it again. But I don't think if the Jaguars try to run with sim- something similar to what the Patriots did, they don't have the guys to cover. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, they got the, they got the front seven. Don't get yeah. me wrong. They got the front seven, but they do absolutely do not have the guys in the secondary to deal, you know, that we won't be able to do what we can do. And even even still, that it's not a defense that's run. They have athletes. They have, they have better personnel than the Patriots, but the defense isn't run as well as the Patriots' defense yeah. is. And for no, that reason, we'll be able to. As well. <laughs> yeah, and we'll, be, we'll get some guys back from injury, yeah. so I'm not too worried about it. It'll be all right. And Herndon should be a full go. Yeah, this, this guy's got to play, man. It's too much <laughs> iron bar for this guy, dog. Like, I don't no, know bro. what it is. And I do – I don't know if I said this. I like the over 41 and a half. Yeah, a lot of points. Eagles bad. at Buffalo. I feel like – so the over is 42 and a half. And I feel like if the over is hit, Eagles are going to win. But I don't think the over could be hit. I got to go Buffalo minus two and a half. I wouldn't bet the spread, though. Yeah, I wouldn't bet the spread uh, mostly because, um, Joe, you're wrong. The Eagles are going to win the game because they were embarrassed last week. You know, the coach guaranteed a win against a team that just lost to, you know, now the story's going to be, oh, they lost to the Jets. How do we, you know, so that that whole yeah. thing. So I think that – I think the Eagles will pull it out. I think Wentz will get it back together. People are like, oh, Wentz is terrible. We should have kept Foles. No, no, no. The team's like – it, it, it this is a close one though. It's not like an easy call by any by any shot because that that Eagles team is hit or miss pretty much. You know they're just mm-hmm. they're really not that good honestly, and that secondary is still bad. So, um, but I'm, I'm gonna take the Eagles. I'll, I'll take their front seven. I think they'll try to do a lot of what they did to us against them and just mm-hmm. bring it. They'll just bring a lot of guys and just let the chips fall where they may. So hopefully, um. You know, hopefully it'll be good. I mean, you yeah. see that even with them, with the Cowboys. The Cowboys got their tackles back, and they were fine. They could deal with Eagles pressures, and Eagles had the, you know, the Eagles had to play in coverage. Amari wasn't hurt, you know. Mm-hmm. And you see him get picked apart when there's, you know, healthy guys. And, I mean, you know, Brown and I think – isn't Beasley hurt? I think Beasley's had a concussion or something. But I just – I don't think it'll be – I think the Eagles will win. But it's going to be a good game for sure. It'll be a good game. Yeah, I, I hope the Eagles pull it out. I'm just if, if it's a defensive battle, Buffalo's gonna win. If it's an offensive battle, the Eagles will win. Yep. Yep. 
Next game, Seattle at Atlanta. Seattle, they're only favored uh, five and a half points. Take that bet. Yeah, I don't get with this whole Atlanta thing. Now, I mean, there's, I mean, they don't. Honestly, Sanu might help them just because they can use Ridley more. But this offense has been so weird. Like I just, mm-hmm. and I mean, they like they 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 can score points. You know, it's not that they yeah. can't score points, but it's just their team. You, I just can't trust the Falcons. It's like they're, so they're bipolar bad. the way they they score points. Oh, we're gonna put up fifty points now, and then next game we're gonna come out and put up eight. Yeah, it's it's just not good. There's just yeah. Oh, and I, take, I like the under. The I do like the under fifty three and a half points. Love the under there. Last one o'clock game, Tampa at Tennessee. Ryan Tannehill so, played really good. He did. Tennis uh, does Tampa? Did Tampa Bay have a bye? Last um, no, I think they played. I don't. No, maybe oh, yeah. they did. Yeah, have they, a bye. they 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 did have a bye. Okay. So two weeks to prepare. Jameis Winston coming off a five interception game, but it's at Tennessee. I think I'm, I'm going to go Tampa. Yeah, I'm going Tampa too, bro. I just don't – I have this vendetta now kind of because, you know, Mario is not starting anymore and people mm-hmm. are like, you know, it, it, it's, it's really not his fault. You know, you had, what, three three different or three coordinators in three years, three different offense yeah. coordinators in three years. Like, you can't – you're never going to be able to adjust to a system like mm-hmm. that. So, I mean, I just I, – I got a thing. I, I'm going with the Bucks. Tell, tell Mario to start. I probably won't bet on the Titans the rest of the season, so. Yeah, and probably won't start the rest of the season. So, and let's be honest, they beat the Chargers, who lost to the Steelers, who with their third string quarterback. So, yeah, I th- I do think Tampa Bay gets back on track. Four o'clock games. It's actually four o five. Carolina at the Forty ers You uh, know what? This is this is one where yeah, that's like I'm I'm leaning. I'm I'm gonna go 49ers just because they yeah. they're a very good football team, and I the Panthers are good, but they're just I, not. Uh, I think this is the game where we're gonna see can Kyle Allen do what we ask him to do, because they're no longer could rely on McCaffrey too much. You know, this is a very good defense, and with Emmanuel Sanders, I feel like if Carolina finds themselves in a hole early in the game, they're gonna have to rely on Kyle, Kyle Allen to throw the ball not make any rookie mistakes. I think the 49ers win this game. But I do love the under, 42 points. Yeah, I like that too. I think it's going to be hard to, you know, the 49ers don't run an offense where they're going to score in bunches, really. Mm-hmm. They're going to, you know, if, if, they, if they're dominant on the run, then it'll start opening up things. But they're not going to just drop 70 on, like, you know, 15, 60 points on you. This is, yeah, you know, if they blow good, a team out, not... their blowout, quote unquote, would be like 20 to 3, 20 to 7. Yeah, that's like how they 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 blow teams out. You know, this mm-hmm. seems like the Patriots that can that they can give you forty fifty. The Chiefs can give you forty fifty. The the Lions could give you that, but this this forty nine seems not that. There, Jimmy G's he's a he's probably the best game manager in the NFL right now. That's just but that's what he is. He's yeah. not he's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not Stafford. He's not one of those guys. So, moving on four twenty five games. There are two of them. Browns at Pats. I got the Pats, but I do like the Browns take them spread plus 13. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's. I think that's that very disrespectful. But yeah, honestly. I don't think it's going to get that crazy. But we said that about the Jets game. But I, I do like the spread. And the overs, 45 and a half points, I'd stay away from it. Yeah, I like the spread, not the over. And I think that, you know, this page just seems not going to be able to do to you, – you might be able to guard Robbie Anderson. You're not going to be able to guard yeah. – Jar- you, you're not get- the Patriots aren't going to be able to guard, you know, Jarvis and Odell with Stephen Gilman. One of them's going to be open. It's just how it's going to work. Like you can, you can blitz as much as you want. That old line's better than ours too. Like it's going to be a good game. But I got, I got, I got the Patriots too, though, man. I can't go with the Browns at this point. This Patriots team just, you know, they're firing right now on all cylinders. So yeah, here, here's a fun fact just for future betting: the New England Patriots under uh, Bill Belichick and Tom Brady have been the most profitable team to bet on. In sports history. Fun yeah, they fact. Just, they just win. I mean, imagine yeah. people who bet on them in the Atlanta game. Like, you're, like, thinking your money's gone, and then these guys mm-hmm. just win. I remember, like, it's I just it's just so annoying. I really do. And, like, this is a time where we need to address what I spoke about earlier, just how awful it is if 
you're anywhere from the ages of let's say what Joe let's say let's say 19 to 28 honestly not even yeah I, if you any anyone who's choosing to be a Patriots fan at the current in the last 15 years is the worst type of person like unless yeah. you had a, you know your dad was a fan or something like that or you have or you're from Boston like dog if you're a Patriots fan like you are the worst kind of person like you are just picking the best team and just going with them and like Hey, you know what? People are gonna do it. It is what it is, but it's just annoying, Joe. Like, it's it very annoying very and frustrating. Just uh, to all the Patriot fans who do that, all good things come to an end, and and hopefully the next twenty years it will. <laughs> yeah, at some, at some point, you know, Brady's gonna be gone, and then the, Belichick will get somebody else to play well. But I think that it'll be a situation where but even Bill Belichick with us every on year. the older side when it comes to coaching. He became the oldest coach to coach a Super Bowl and well to just coach in the Super Bowl let alone win one so yeah we'll see I, how I, we'll see how it goes I mean you know I mean, at some you point think, you gotta be able to chill to your family yeah I just yeah he's we'll see we'll like, see dude give up you won okay everything yeah I think he's <laughs> uh, maybe at seven or eight I think after eight he would probably be like okay like it's gonna be no this is gonna be a long time for anybody does this like yeah all right, I guess it's on the family life. Yeah, that's been like this guy. But who knows, though? This guy's nuts. Like, I just. He's, he's the yeah. best coach of all time. I, I don't think it's debatable. And he's actually a great guy, too. Him and Tom Brady are two great guys. I think they're going to make good analysts because Bill Belichick's starting to take a seat at NFL Network here and there. And I think it's almost time. Next game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, wait, did you want? Did you have something to say? No, nah, I was going to talk about how we got to give Brady's respect, but you know, it's, yeah. it's been said. Yeah. We're, good. We're good. Respect, respect is he's the best of all time. Yeah, he is. No question. Oakland at Houston. I do like Oakland. I, I'm not going to pick them, but I do like the way Oakland's playing. I think that game is a little different if Derek Carr doesn't fumble uh, into the end zone. But I got to go Houston. I think they get back on track after a rough loss at Indy. Yeah, I'm going Houston too here. I just, I just can't trust. The, I mean, like you said, the Raiders aren't playing bad football, so yeah. it wouldn't be out of question to think you know they got a shot. They do, but the you know, and Will Fuller's hurt too, so that's another thing. But I just think, man, the Texans are just the Sean Watson's going to figure it out, so they'll be, they'll be. All right. But I do like the over. The over's fifty-one and a half points. Yeah, I could, I could see. Yeah, I could see it being that because the Raiders do score. They find a way mm-hmm. to score. They definitely do. They put up at so. least, I think, 25 points in their last two games. Yep. yep. So, uh, Sunday Night Football, Green Bay at Kansas City. I would smash Kansas City to win that game. If Patrick Mahomes was playing, Green Bay is favored by four points. I think they win, and but I'd stay away from the over 47.5 points just because you don't know what you have with Matt Moore right now. And Tariq Hill is Tariq Hill, and he could go off for an, an offensive explosion. But I do think Green Bay would win no matter what. Yeah, I think Green Bay is going to win too. I think Rodgers, you know, he's coming into his own. He, you know, he entered the MVP race, you know, four touchdowns – or six touchdowns, right, last week? So uh, Yeah, yep. He lost his mind, so – And you a know, perfect passer rating, 158.3. Yeah, he was he, – he played. He played some football. But, and I think, you know, Matt Moore's good. He'll be able to – you know, he got weapons. You you put a, a professional quarterback with all those weapons, and they're going to be okay, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, But I just think the Packers are they're playing well right now, and the quarterback's an MVP candidate. So, you got to – I'm going with it. Final game, Monday Night Football. I don't – like this at all i think they should have changed this <laughs> after big ben got hurt so miami yeah. at pittsburgh pittsburgh's favored minus 14 and a half i think that's a trap i'd stay away from betting on this game unless you are going to smash the under which is 43 points yeah i definitely do like the under i don't know you want know, you know steelers yeah i'm 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 with you on that one joke too i think we're going up i think we're going pittsburgh here bro like there's the this might this will be close to Miami Redskins for worst football game played on a professional football field ever. Yeah, it'll be like it'll be like last week. It's just not you know. And without Ben, the Steelers are not the same. They gonna have to figure that out because Mason Rudolph is not the guy that's gonna get them what Ben got them. I'm sorry. Like, well, it's, it's gonna be hard to find a quarterback that can do that. Let's be honest. 
Yeah, because the thing is, you're talking about, I mean, a guy who's probably what you got. You got to give him top 20 quarterback, top 25 quarterbacks all time yeah. easily. So, you know, the good luck. But yeah, it's just right now they need him. They need him. They need him back. They need him for his two years on that contract and see what happens. But, yeah, that's all the games. That's Monday night. God bless all everybody right. watching that game. So, so we got um those. Those are our picks for week seven, and or is this week eight? Joe? This is week, this eight. week eight. The, right? the yeah, trade yeah. deadline is almost upon us. That's why we're okay. Got you, got you. So for week eight, there we go. Um, but up to week seven, my record right now is sixty two forty three and one. And Mine Joe, is, I just you... threw the paper in like a celebratory ending. So let me go get it. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm actually the same. I'm sixty three forty two and one. Very rough week. Um, well, we're you're one, you're up one. You're six. I'm sixty two forty three, and you're sixty three forty two. So we're close. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're, close. we're close. But we're but, over um, five hundred. Very bad week for both of us last week. I think we're going to do a lot better this week. Yeah, it was close to five hundred, like eight and five. It's just getting me. You know, it's not 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 the best. But we'll get we're getting better. So this um, is kind of an ablib, and I'm just going to uh, replace because Notre Dame didn't play this weekend. I didn't know they weren't playing. Yeah. Um, off the top of your head, any quick trade ideas? Who who could be um, on the market? Uh, what was there was something I saw about? Um, oh my, I can't I can't remember, guy. I was looking at it today. There this is totally unprepared, game. guys. I, I just found out about a week ago from Vinny Lafort that people actually listen to us. So sorry for yeah, this honestly, kind but, of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we I I have no I. I mean, the, the Eagles trading for someone in the secondary, I guess that mm-hmm. would be my – that's like, yeah, they need it. I don't think Dude, Odell's going anywhere. I would love anywhere. to give the Eagles Tremaine Johnson. Yeah, but they're not – you know, Joe, he's awful. I mean, that that the, that was the one really awful – like that – the one the play against Philip Dorsett where he's five it's to six yards too. off. It and he really gets beat is a shame. A save. Like, it's just it, – there's nothing good about that, though. There's just nothing. But Do you think Leonard Williams could be a guy? I don't think so. He see, yeah, okay, I, like he had a solid game yesterday, but and it kind of boosts his trade stock. But I don't think mm-hmm. they're gonna do it. I don't think so, just because. I mean, they should though, because we really shouldn't pay him. Like, what's the point? You know? I mean, I like I like our line right now. I, I like we already have Quinn and Williams, and we have is it Phillips, the the undrafted guy we picked up. Um, who had a game? I'm not sure. He yeah, he was the playing. I, I know you're talking about. He showed yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yep. I mean, it's just yeah, that's it, if he got traded, I wouldn't be upset. I wouldn't, obviously wouldn't mm-hmm. be surprised. I've been talking about it forever, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. That's kind of one of those things where if it happens, it happens. I mean, we're gonna have to. The money is really not that much of an issue for us. We could keep him, but you know, I'd be more interested in honestly, yeah, just getting rid of him, seeing if we can get somebody else in free agency, or and we really don't have that bad of a situation. I mean, if we can pick up somebody in the secondary, I'd gladly, you know, get rid of him. You know, so yeah. Uh, and another off the top of my head, I actually thought this was going to happen just by his reaction on Sunday to the loss of the Rams. I was thinking Julio Jones was on the block. He was yeah. not happy. He was straight he was, face. He was upset. Very upset, he was, he, but I, I can't see the Matt, the Matt Ryan, Julio Jones double team leaving us anytime soon. Yeah, I think that it's going to be – I think it's going to be tough for that to happen. I mean, I, that was one that I – so I don't know if that was one I was talking about earlier, but I definitely did see that um, somewhere about the Julio thing. So maybe you – know, like I said, the Odell thing, I don't think is going to happen either. No. But, um, no. you know, can't be surprised by much. We knew Sanders was gone. So – and, mm-hmm. you know, I, don't, I think Diggs will stay now, but that was a real possibility if they would have probably lost these past two weeks instead of one. one so, um. Yeah, yeah, that's – I mean, the last uh, last thing I want to say, Oregon did play, beat Washington. <laughs> um, Justin Herbert was Pac, uh, Pac-12 uh, player of the week. He had four touchdowns, two for 280, 24 for 38. Um, he could have been more efficient, but I think if he had uh, if he had his tight end, uh, Jake Breland, who's out for the season, unfortunately, he would uh, – it probably would have been a little better. He had to move one of their bigger uh, – one of their bigger receivers to tight end. So that kind of sucks, but um, Spencer um, – and I do want to talk about Spencer Michigan Webster. real fast because Colton beat me in fantasy in my very small money league. I, I'm winning my big money league. Don't worry. I'm six and one in my big money league, but Colton beat me in the $20 league and Michigan got, got destroyed 
by Penn State. Yes. And, and and I'm going to bring it back to one reason. Get Jim Harbaugh a new pants guy. And now they're going to walk into Notre Dame and get blown out because you're not getting him a new pants guy. His pants look awful. Yeah, that, that, that Penn State team is a lot better than I actually thought they were. I don't know if Penn State was as good as they actually are, but they got a shot. They got a shot. They keep winning. And, you know, they're in the – um. They're, they they can they and when you're in the Big Ten you you got a shot every year if you win your games you're going to be in the playoffs so um well yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes we'll see how it goes Michigan's definitely bad Colton was you know I was right I was right about Patterson so there's that um <laughs> and we'll just keep going yeah fantasy is just the lost cause for me Patrick Mahomes gets hurt Thursday my week ended literally there the, so there's there's just nothing good going on there but um. I think that's going to do it for this this week, week eight. Uh, yes, week eight's preview, week seven's, uh, you know, no, recap. It's, yeah, it was week seven recap, week eight preview, kind of. Preview, yeah. So um, we will see you guys next week, same time. We You can catch you, – you can, you can get us on, 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 ins, on the Instagram at <laughs> Sports Opinions 30. Get us uh, on the Instagram and the SoundCloud <laughs> and, the, and the Twitter. <laughs> then we got uh, Sports Opinions, at Sports Opinions Podcast on Twitter. In the book face. <laughs> I am at Rob Planner Jr. on Twitter, at R-E-P-J-R on Instagram. Joe is at Joe Hackett underscore on Instagram. And the only thing that Joe ever cares about is SoundCloud, Joe. Uh, yeah, I'm Joey Says on SoundCloud. And Alex, don't disrespect yeah. me. Put one of the new songs as the intro. Yeah, like Alex we, is- we talked it up. We talked it up, and then it wasn't. Yeah, and it wasn't. It, 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 we'll, we'll we'll talk to him. I got it when I send it to him. I like to like make sure you put the new song in there. I think you will, but he's on, I think he's on vacation right now, so I think we might have to yes. rely on David to upload this. So we'll see how that goes. Jeez, yeah, this this, this might ne- never get uploaded. <laughs> this yeah, this, we nobody might ever hear this one, dog. But <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but all right, guys, we will see you next week, same time, same place. Have a good week, go Jets. Deuce, deuce.